coming up at 4.30. Yesterday's election results are in, and Daryl Davis has retained his spot at Edmund Mayer in one of the lowest voter turnouts in years. Is a trend of voter apathy starting? Plus, the founder of Cash App was murdered in an overnight stabbing in San Francisco. An investigation has begun, but where does the company go from here? And the weather has been all over the place lately. Is there any stability on the way? Your full weather forecast and more on this edition of U Central News. Good evening, I'm Brady Gray. And I'm Miracle Garrett. Welcome to this edition of U Central News. And voting for Edmonds mayor was yesterday and the results are in. Daryl A. Davis won the mayoral election for Edmond by 51%. Citizens also voted on Edmond City Council Member Ward 1 and Ward 2 positions. Tom Robbins won by 52% for Ward 1, and Barry K. Moore won by 50% in Ward 2. It's important to note that some of these elections were won by a razor-thin margin. This really shows that your vote does make a difference. And while voting is important, the turnout for this election was fairly low. This is according to the Oklahoma County Election Board Public Information Officer Misha Moore. U Central's Promise Hill talked to some students on campus to find out if they voted or if they even knew there were elections. Here's what she found. Um, I did not vote. Um, simply because I did, did not have the time to vote. Um, I'm a full-time working student. Um, and I would just say all in all, um, it's not a lot of our, my generation that kind of votes. No, I did not. I did not. No, I did not. <laughs> no, we're, we're international. <laughs> yes, we are not. No, no, I didn't. No, I didn't even know there was an election yesterday. If you want to stay up to date on all elections, you can sign up for reminders at o the Oklahoma State Election Board website at oklahoma.gov elections. In other news, an update to the Oklahoma City Animal Shelter. Shelter pulled samples from 10% of their ill population and results showed that dogs have either canine flu or strep. Every shelter dog is being treated with name brand antibiotics and the shelter will remain closed until further notice. People who find a lost pet are advised to provide the pet with temporary housing and look for the owner through social media and lost animal reports. The shelter says this is the first time in 24 years they've had to close due to a disease outbreak. We'll keep you updated as we find out more information. Two juveniles were taken into custody after a viral social media video shows them repeatedly hitting two dogs and making threats to a Metro Middle School. Oklahoma City Police were able to track down the kids and take both of them into custody with two counts of felony animal cruelty. Oklahoma City Animal Welfare completed a search warrant at the home where the dogs were being kept. Three dogs were found. Two of them were the ones featured in the video, and all are expected to be okay. And Oklahoma City Nightlife might be enforcing more security measures. Police responded to multiple shootings over the weekend at local clubs and bars. Here are the details. What should be a fun night out with friends can quickly turn deadly. Many Oklahoma City residents are now questioning their safety after a deadly string of shootings and stabbings have occurred right here in Oklahoma City. Police are still searching for those involved in a bar fight that turned deadly this week. Three men were found deceased inside the Whiskey Barrel Saloon located in southwest Oklahoma City Saturday night. The altercation was due to a rivalry between two biker gangs. So far, police has arrested Tyler Myers on one count of first-degree murder. The same night, just hours later, police responded to another shooting in southwest Oklahoma City at the Paloma Negra Bar. Here, police say the suspects were denied re-entry to the bar, which then caused them to open fire on security. The bouncer is still in critical condition. Many popular nightclubs and bars like the one behind me are usually bustling with business throughout the week. But now, when the sun goes down, these doors look the same. I asked the community if they think businesses are suffering or not, and if they feel safe in Oklahoma City. I know the bars and everything probably do take an impact whatsoever. Uh, it's, uh, it's really just feeling comfortable within your surroundings, I suppose. And if you are enjoying a night out, please remember to stay aware of your surroundings and there are safety in numbers. Please drink in moderation and try to stay away. And with that wind, you can tell that the weather in Oklahoma has been a little crazy recently. Definitely. The wind was blowing all over the place, and you can take a look at your screen. This was in Guymon, Oklahoma yesterday. That's near the Panhandle, and you can check out all that dust. And we know it's been windy here, too. Let's check in with U Central's Destiny Pittman to see when these winds may die down. Destiny?
Good evening, Bronco. So yes, it is. It was very windy earlier this week. The wind today is currently blowing at north um, 10 miles per hour, but there are gusts of wind up to 23 miles per hour. So every once in a while, you feel a strong gust of wind that's really strong, um, but currently they're not too strong. Um, outside, it is a little cloudy. There are a few clouds in the sky. Um, it's 53 degrees, so it's not as warm as it has been. It was in the high 80s, but now the temperatures are starting to drop just a little, but don't worry because that warm weather will be back. And then it isn't too humid today either. The humidity rate is about 31% and then it feels like 50 degrees outside just because of that wind. So it does just feel a little cooler than what it actually is. And then moving on tonight, it's going to be about 39 degrees tonight. It is going to be partly cloudy. So there are going to be some clouds in the sky and then it's, the winds are going to be changing directions. They're going to be blowing northeast at five to eight miles per hour. So that wind is going to slow down quite a bit. And then the humidity rate is going to be 31% tonight. And there is no chance of rain, so that's very nice. And it looks like spring is finally going to be here to stay. That's all I have for now. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Destiny. And with that wind dying down, we have a good update on the Simpson Road fire. According to Logan County Emergency Management Facebook page, as of 8 a.m. this morning, commands and chiefs have ended fire operations and are returning to normal functions. While yesterday was a high fire danger day, we're going into a bit of a calmer pattern this Easter weekend. Dry conditions do remain in place across most of the state and initial attack activity is expected to continue, although significant fire occurrence is unlikely. A local church in Oklahoma sent out a crew to help the victims of the Little Rock tornado after opening their doors to people who needed help after last Friday's wildfires. Members of the Waterloo I'm sorry, members of the Waterloo Road Church of Christ immediately packed up and hit the road. They have been helping clean up damage the last couple of days. And earlier today, the College of Business here at UCO hosted a cover letter workshop to help students with their applications. We spoke to the Director of Business and Transfer Student Services to talk about what exactly will be covered. Sections of a cover letter, which include their interest in the position, their specific skills and strengths related to the job, as well as their interest in setting up a potential interview with the employer. The event is held a couple of times a semester, so if you missed out, don't worry. Keep an eye out on your student email for more announcements on the next workshop. And right here on campus, the Melton Gallery is featuring the art of UCO alum Eric Perry in their latest exhibition. U Central's Adrian Escobar spoke to the gallery staff about the show and their plans down the road. Striving to bring a deeper cultural understanding of visual arts to UCO, the Melton Gallery provides a chance for UCO students and community members to experience a range of art exhibits right here on campus. For more information, we spoke to Carrie Couts, curator of the Melton Gallery. Usually there's about three exhibitions per semester, um, but if one goes a little bit shorter, then every, occasionally we'll have four um, in a semester, but generally we have three. Currently on display at the mountain, the Eric Perry exhibition, Takes of a Village. So Eric Perry is a film photographer, and this is his autoethnography, um, basically his individual look at his hometown of Hobart, and specifically rural Oklahoma. Eric Perry is only one of many local artists and UCO alums to have their work presented in the gallery. Some of the Melton's most prominent shows are the senior capstone exhibits, which feature the works of graduating seniors of the College of Art and Design. It should be a lot more local art, obviously, students here getting to display their art. I think that will be a really cool thing for them to kind of get a glimpse of what their future could look like in a way, because it's like your stuff is in an actual museum. From Oklahoma City, this is U Central's Adrian Escobar. Senior Art Capstone Exhibition opens the 4th of May and attendance is free to UCO students and community members. And we've got a live look at traffic outside. It didn't look like it was moving for a second, but now you see that it is, thankfully. It was a lot colder this morning, uh, Miracle, but it's warming up. I think spring is finally showing itself. Yep. Stay tuned. Destiny Pittman has your full week forecast up next. I was raised to believe in the power of possibility, to always move forward, but never forget where I came from, to value hard work, ingenuity, and hospitality. On one hand, my people are rough and rugged. On the other, refined and elegant. They taught me how to love beautiful things and cherish my past, to seek out adventure, eat well, and to have a good time. So I keep their traditions alive every place I go. They call me Oklahoma City, but you can call me the modern frontier.
Youth Century News as a whole, you got to be in those different areas, like being on camera, being off camera, being in the control room. And so I feel like that is what prepared me most about being in the workplace. Youth Central and the Mass Comm Department has provided me all the tools and the fundamentals that are needed in order to thrive well and thrive fast at my job. Maybe it's time to hit the road and visit a place where stories unfold. This is the land of the ultimate road trip with sights old and new on Route 66. There's fun to be had, so much to do, and a few new surprises before you get through. Oklahoma has the most miles to share of Route 66. It's really quite rare. TravelOK.com will show you the way. Come see for yourself this iconic highway. Welcome back everyone. So tonight the temperatures are going to be dropping and it's going to be a little colder than it has been in a while. So let's just take a statewide look and see what the cities across the state are going to be like tonight. So we'll start up in Guymon. So up in Guymon it's going to be 23 degrees there um, and then down in Woodward it's going to be 30. So but there it's going to be below freezing in both of those areas. Most of the rest of the state is a little bit above freezing um, or right at that. And then over in Clinton it's going to be 34 and then down in Altus it's going to be 38. And then as we move over down in Ardmore, it's going to be 39, I mean 41, my bad. And then the Oklahoma City and Edmond area is going to be about 40, 39 degrees out tonight. So if you want to be out tonight, just make sure to bring a jacket with you because it is going to be a little chillier than what it has been. And as we move over into McAllister, it's going to be about 42 degrees there tonight and then 47 down in Idabel. And then as moving back up, it is going to be a little colder up in this area of the state. And it's going to be about 33 degrees, Ponca City 35, Tulsa 38, and then up in Miami, it is going to be about 34 degrees tonight. So as you see, low, thir like low to high 30s, um, and then the OKC area is going to be in the 40s tonight. And then just moving on to our weather forecast, our seven day forecast. So as you can see, it's going to finally be sunny every day this upcoming week. We haven't seen this in a while. This is the first time um, for the spring season that we're seeing this. Um, and the temperatures are going to start warming up after today. So today outside, it was 53 degrees. The low was 39 and it was pretty sunny. And then moving on to Thursday, the temperatures are going to pick up a little bit. It's going to be 63 degrees, and then the low is going to be 37. And then as we move on to this weekend, it's going to be pretty warm. Friday is going to be about 67 degrees. The low is going to be 42. And then Saturday, the high is 70, and the low is 46. And then as we move on into Sunday, it's going to be sunny. And the temperature, as you see, it's going to be very close to 80. It's going to be about 77 degrees. Low is going to be 53. And then as we move on to Monday and Tuesday, next week is going to be starting off very warm. It's going to be in the 80s, so we will definitely be able to feel that spring weather out. And on Monday, it's going to be 81 with a low of 56, and then Tuesday will be 84 also with a low of 56. I know that I, for one, am super excited about this warm spring weather coming towards us. I'm excited. Hopefully next week I'll be able to spend some time outside because I haven't really been able to do that in a while. Do you guys have any plans for this warm weather that's coming up? I know everybody probably has a lot of plans for the warm weather coming up. Easter mm -hmm. weekend. Exactly. I know we're definitely going to be outside. I'm going to try to win. You know, we have like a little competition with a golden egg. It has money in it. So I always try to win <laughs> every year. So. And uh, Destiny, you on your Monday forecast earlier this week, it had rain uh, set for Easter Sunday. I'm guessing that's kind of past now, now that the forecasts are getting closer. Yes, now that the forecast is getting closer, the, cha um, the chance of rain was only about 20% um, on Monday, but that it's completely gone away. So it's looking like it will be completely sunny that day now. That's well, great. I guess Easter Sunday is going to be Yay. quite beautiful this weekend, thankfully. Thank you very much, Destiny. Coming up on social media, the founder of Cash App was found stabbed to death overnight. What are police saying? And the Biden administration is bringing AI into the spotlight. Emma Birch has more on what the president is saying. After the break, stay tuned.
I think I'm gonna miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Maybe it's just a little moment. I could go back. I could go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. You can achieve a lot using your imagination. <laughs> I mean, I don't like to brag, but... Wait, who's that? And why is she all over these achievement awards? But with STEM, the sky's the limit. Shaboom! Use STEM to envision. Okay, I'm seeing it. Yeah. Invent. Got any ideas? I've got a few, actually. And create a better world. Told you she's super smart. If she can STEM, so can you. Find out more at She Can STEM. In the land of wonder and awe, you won't believe you see what you saw. Where there's something to do for young and for old. Where stories are written and then they're retold. Visit TravelOK.com today. Come see for yourself and come out to play. I'm Emma Birch, and here is your social media update. We have some breaking news. The founder of Cash App was found stabbed to death early Tuesday morning near downtown San Francisco. Bob Lee's death was confirmed by Joshua Goldberg, the CEO of his current employer, MobileCoin, who wrote in a tweet Wednesday morning that Lee was, quote, an inmate, an incredible human being, end quote. Police say officers responded to the report of a stabbing in the city's Rincon Hill neighborhood and took a 43-year-old man to the hospital where he died from his injuries. No arrests have been made and police say the investigation is ongoing. With former President Donald Trump's arrest yesterday, his name has been trending to number one for 24 hours now on Twitter. But even with the former president's indictment, he is still has a strong support for the running in the 2024 candidacy. As you can see on the screen, Trump has gained 10 points in the poll since his indictment. Trump is being charged with 34 felony criminal charges of falsifying business records. His next in-person hearing is scheduled for December 4th. And President Joe Biden is set to meet with his Council of Advisors on Science and Technology on Tuesday. According to a White House official, they will discuss the risk and opportunities of artificial intelligence, also known as AI. They are looking at the importance of protecting individual rights and national security and amid innovations. Biden is also set to call on Congress to pass a bipartisan privacy legislation to protect kids and limit the amount of personal data tech companies collect. And finally, two dogs that are best friends are going viral on TikTok after their adorable reunion after being apart. CNN's Jean Moose has more. When's the last time someone was this excited to see you after a separation? Meet Rolo and Sadie. Watch them meet after being apart and check out their faces when they FaceTime. This is the video that had viewers howling. Sadie, a husky and German shepherd cross, and Rollo, a Rottweiler shepherd mix, met during the pandemic when their owners moved into different apartments in the same house in the Canadian city of Edmonton. Sadie's never really been the biggest fan of other dogs, but when she met Rollo, she whined and cried and laid down on her back like she'd <laughs> just met the love of her life. But then Rollo's owner moved three hours away for a job opportunity. We do FaceTime every Thursday night so the dogs can see each other. <laughs> the whining, the howling. Their reunions are joyous and their owners are also best friends. They say there's a chance they'll all move back under the same roof, but until then, parting may be such sweet sorrow, but reunions are a ball. Chinimos, CNN, New York. Miracle, that video literally just felt my heart. I'm a dog fan, and that just makes me miss my puppies. It was so adorable, the howling. I, my dog does that whenever I like leave 
for a few days, like over the weekend or something. She's with my mom. But I just think that's so cute. I love puppies. I love dogs. What do you think? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I could own. I'm a dachshund. We have two miniature dachshunds, and I could own pretty much a whole litter if I wanted to because <laughs> oh, they're just so cute, and they just love to cuddle, I and know. I miss them right now. So <laughs> <laughs> They're adorable. Well, coming up on UCO, softball ranks number four in national coaches ranking, and WWE is back in business. UCO's Jaden Ford has more when we come back. Feel the beat of nature at a park or forest near you. Find a forest and music inspired by nature at discovertheforest.org. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Welcome back, Broncos. I'm Jaden Ford, and this is your Wednesday Sports Update. Central Oklahoma maintained its spot number four in this week's national coaches ranking. To stay at number one, North Georgia collected all 16 first place votes from all around the country. Tampa followed with second, and Texas Tyler, and then the Broncos. This marks UCO's 35th consecutive appearance in the poll, including the 18th straight in the top 10. Central is currently 27-4 on the season. They host a pair of conference doubleheaders this weekend, and the Broncos take on Lincoln at 2 p.m. Friday and Central Missouri 12 p.m. Saturday. And moving on to baseball, the Central Oklahoma baseball team went on the road this past weekend, and they won in high fashion. The Broncos scored a whopping 26 runs en route to beat Oklahoma Christian 26-7. And on top of the offensive dominance, Central Oklahoma also took a no-hitter into the fifth inning. The 26 runs scored Tuesday are tied for the fourth most in school history, and all nine Broncos starters got a hit. That's amazing if you ask me. Central Oklahoma is back in Edmond for, for this weekend in my AA series against Washburn. The Broncos begin the three-game conference series Thursday night at Wendell Simmons Field. And over the weekend, the World Wrestling Entertainment hosted their annual flagship event, WrestleMania. The two-day event is basically a Super Bowl for the sport, and shortly after WrestleMania, WWE agreed to merge with the Ultimate Fighting Championship. They allowed to create a new company run by Ari Emanuel and Vince McMahon. The UFC president, Dana White, will remain as president of the UFC, and WWE CEO Nick Khan will stay on as the president of the wrestling business. A lot of them say this is going to be WWE 2.0. Emanuel said this in an interview that aired on Monday's CNBC's Squawk on the Street. Personally, I think this is a great move for usually the UFC fighters, they get old and there's not necessarily a retirement plan. But with this new agreement that WWE can help the fighters even after the last UFC fight. And moving on to the NBA, the Oklahoma City Thunder, who are currently 38 and 42, they were on a road trip last night playing the defending champions, Golden State Warriors. They lost, unfortunately, but the games between these two are usually high scoring and filled with a lot of highlights, and that's exactly what happened last night. Shea Gillis Alexander and rookie guard Jalen Williams combined for 51 points, including Lugensit Dortz pinching in 19. The Thunder and Warriors battled back and forth until the fourth quarter, where the Warrior guard Jordan Poole scored 13 in the fourth quarter. 
The Thunder are 10th in the West, and with only a couple games left, they're looking to win out in order to guarantee a playing spot. Oklahoma City will be back in action tomorrow night against the Utah Jazz. In Monday night, the NCAA Men's National Championship was played between UConn and San Diego State University. UConn's victory over the Aztecs ended up being the lowest viewed national championship game to date. Ahead of the Final Four, which included UConn, San Diego State, Florida Atlantic, and Miami, a lot of fans were saying this was a boring group of four and they were not the best teams. The Huskies, who won 76-59 over SDSU, this game only averaged 15 million viewers, marking the lowest since 2017 when UConn was in the championship again. But on the positive side of the thing, the women reached the most viewership ever, and their national championship will be great for quite some time. Hey, and Brady, did you get to catch the game? And if you did, what do you think about UConn's dominant performance? I caught it. I caught it more in the second half when they cut it back to within six. The Aztecs did, and it was unreal. But I do kind of agree that that low viewership just has to be because of the group that was in there. I mean, there were two, four, or a four and a five seed, and no, yeah. no Duke, no Kentucky, none of the flagship people that everyone right. are pseudo fans of across the country. Yeah, you're right, man. I definitely think the game was a little bit watered down, but it's always great to see a national championship. Shout out to SDSU, their first big time on the big scene, and UConn, they're going to keep being great. That's all Absolutely. I have for sports today. Appreciate you, Jaden. Coming up, we have our last look at weather. Don't go anywhere. Feel the beat of nature at a park or forest near you. Find a forest and music inspired by nature at discovertheforest.org. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Let's send it to Destiny Pittman with our last look at weather. Welcome back, guys. So the, um, this week is going to be pretty warm. Like I said earlier, it's going to be sunny up until next week. And then the winds are going to be slowing down later this week. And then it looks like we are finally away from that fire weather. Currently, there aren't any burn bans in Oklahoma County. So it looks like we're safe from that weather. That's all I have for now. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Destiny. And thankfully, that fire is completely done out at Simpson, Simpson Road in northern Oklahoma. That was pretty devastating for a minute. Yeah, it really was. I think, I don't know, I can't remember how many days it lasted, but the damage was so, so severe. And unfortunately, that is just all the time that we have for today. But I'm Miracle Garrett. I'm Brady Gray. Tune in again tomorrow at 4.30 with our Thursday crew. See you, Edmund.